Mm. So before we start, let me remind that this question is actually one of a kind. Why? Because this question, they combine phasers with no voltage, mesh currents, all that that we do in question one usually. This is really one of a kind. Should you be scared? No. Let them throw any challenge they have at you. Your finals is just another pass your paper. So let us start. Okay. So using no voltage method, find the phaser V1. So they want us to find V1, right? Just follow the steps as usual, like what we do in question one. So in question one, we need to find the we need to identify the nodes, right? So who are the nodes that we need to identify? Uh, this is the ground node. All this is zero. And then this is a whole single node, right? If you're not convinced, ask yourself, is there any device? No device, no device, no device, no device. So this is a single node with a voltage value of V1, with a phaser value of V1, okay? Remember, they're combining phasers with no voltage methods in this question. Um, okay, who else? We also have this node, okay? Take care, there's, always an, there's also a node over here. So, let us get started. Okay, the value of this, right, is actually Vs, right? Because, see, you start from here, this is ground, so it's zero. You cross here, with a, which has a potential difference of Vs. So that means up here, this terminal must be Vs, okay? So now, use the no voltage method. So when you see no voltage method, automatically you think of KCL. So let us take a KCL at V1, right? Because we need to find V1. So let us take a KCL over there. So KCL at one, we have, so first let us identify the currents. See, we have current going in here through this phaser and the currents going out. Who are the currents going out? If we don't know the, the direction, actually we do know another direction over here, right? See, it's pointing inwards. So current in here, current in here. Now who are the currents going out? Going out here, going out here, right? We don't know what they are. Just assume they move out. So move out. Move out. Okay, now we can take KCL. So currents moving in, we have uh, but let, let me get my answer because I don't want to mess up. Okay. Sorry, I, I, I'm taking a while to find my <laughs> sheet. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. So who are the currents moving in? See, currents going in is this and this. So IS moves in and VS. Okay, now what is VS given by? VS, sorry, the, the current moving in, what's the direction? What's the expression for the current moving in? Okay, we have to express it as, Delta V over R, right? So what's the delta V of this? This is, see, it starts from here, Vs, it ends at here, V1. So Vs minus V1. Divided by, what's the resistance? Just 50 ohms. Okay. And then, now, the current's moving up. Who are the currents moving up? We have this and this. So let us look at this one first. So it starts from here, V1, it ends at ground. So V1 minus ground. V1 minus zero. Divide by 50. Plus, last one. So starts from here, V1, ends at here, ground. Okay. So this is a bit difficult. Uh, let us... Because we're trying to solve for V1, right? So we need to make V1 the subject. Okay, so let me work out the algebra of this. So how to make V1 on one side? Let us split this fraction. Okay, so if I split this, I get...
Okay, so now I move this guy to the other side, right? If I do so, I'm just gonna quickly move move ahead. So v1 over 50 plus v1 over 25j. So this moves over 50. Then notice that all these three terms have a common factor of v1. So we're gonna factorize that out. Okay. So factorize it out. Factorize, factorize, factorize. We get v1 here. Then what can we do? Okay, now we can start, start to substitute in values. So is is given by this 22.83. 2.83 at an angle of 45 degrees. And Vs is given by what? It's given by 100 at an angle of zero. 100 at an angle of zero. Okay, you do the algebra, solve for V1. In the end, you shall get uh 79.08 at an angle of 71.6. Okay, please keep this in phaser form. Yeah, I mean, you know, polar form, you know, not rectangular form. Okay. Um determine the phaser I flowing through the voltage source. So the I flowing through, wait, wait, wait. Determine the phaser I of the current flowing through the voltage source. So what they want is this, right? Of the current flowing through the voltage source. Wait, did I read that correctly? Oh, okay. Am I working? I'm wrong. Okay. So they want I, correct? Now, is there any way we can get I? Yes. We look at the potential difference across this 50 ohms. So what do I mean? So we know that this is Vs, and we know that this is V1, which we found already. When you take the ohms law of this, uh, of this resistor, we have delta V is equal to I times Z. This is given by, you see the current flowing through here? So it's V start minus Vn, Vs minus V1 is equal to the current is something we want to find. Z is just 50 ohms. Okay, now let me just bring this downwards to here. Now, what is Vs? We can substitute it in. So Vs is what? Uh, 100 at an angle of zero. And V1 is what we obtained over here. So we just sub it in here. Okay, so if you solve this, pardon me, I need to find this. Use your calculator, 100 at an angle of zero minus 79.08. 79.08 at an angle of 71.6 divided by 50. You should get something about, oh wait, I need to change this to polar. 2.12 at an angle of negative 45 degrees, something like that. Okay, determine the phaser of the voltage source across the current source or the voltage across the current source. So what they want is the voltage, the potential difference across this current source, right? This delta V. But look at this. What is the two no nodes that IS is connected to? See, it's connected to ground, which is zero. And then up here is V1. So what's the delta V of this? Delta V is given by, um, Yeah, the difference between these two terminals. So, which is V1 minus zero, which is V1. And we know that V1 from earlier we got is uh, this, right? So actually, delta V of the current source is just actually V1 minus zero, which is V1, which is 
This answer is 79.08 at an angle of 71.6. So this is the phaser. Moving on. Okay, assuming that the frequency is this, so f is one hertz, which means that omega is two pi f. So two pi f, which means that it's two pi times one, which is two pi. So this is omega is given by two pi. Determine the v1 and vs as a time time do, in the time domain. Okay, so if you get the if you get the phaser, which we already did, right? We found v1 already from the previous question, and vs is given to us as a phaser form. Now they want it in time domain form. So how do you change um, the phasers into time domain? Okay, we call that phasers take the form of this at an angle of five. Okay, it takes this form. So if you want to change it to time domain, time domain, then you copy the amplitude, put cosine omega t plus phi. So basically, this is this, and this is this. So you see, we know from earlier, V1 is this, meaning to say that if you want the time domain form of this, it is copy the amplitude, put a cosine. The omega is what we got earlier. See, this is omega. 2 pi t plus the phase, which is this. Then, yeah, so this is our time domain answer. So Vs. Okay, so Vs, they told us this. Vs is 100 at an angle of zero degrees. So if I want to change it to time domain, amplitude, put a cosine, put the omega, uh, don't forget the t and then add the phase, which is just zero, so I don't need to write anything. But this is our answer.